David Sedney is a former f uh, deputy district, uh, sorry, former deputy assistant secretary of defense for the region. He joins me now from Washington, D.C. David, hello. Good to see you. Thank you very much for having me. Now, the Pakistani government and the judiciary need to walk a pretty fine line on this between how they handle Khan and concerns over whether the backlash could break out into something that could spiral out of control. Do you think they've done a decent job in doing so? You are exactly right. This is a very dangerous situation, one with a very narrow window for the military to successfully handle it. And no one should be under any illusions. It's the military that control Pakistan. The civilian government has always been a figurehead and remains so. Imran Khan took the military support in order to gain power, but then he tried to go after the military. He tried to take control of the military, and the military couldn't allow that. So they have first withdrawn support from him, leading to his removal from power, and now back to the government and the judiciary in filing over 100 cases against Imran Khan. Uh, the military has carried out coups repeatedly over Pakistan's history. They don't want to do it again, but if they have to, they will. Uh, if this spirals into a situation where there is such unrest that the military has to carry out another coup, that will be a huge blow to Pakistani society, both uh, politically and economically, at a time when, when Pakistan's economy is nearly in free fall. Absolutely. Okay, so now you hear the U.S. and the U.K. call for adherence to rule of law in Pakistan. How is one to know whether pursuing corruption charges against Khan is the rule of law or the opposite? It's very difficult to make that distinction and really impossible for anyone outside of Pakistan to make a judgment. So I think the governments of the United States and the United Kingdom don't have any leverage. There's nothing they can do either way. Uh, they have to be sure to stay on the good side of the military because it's the military they've depended upon for years to support uh, them in various anti-terrorist activities, and most particularly for responsible control of Pakistan's nuclear weapons. We should never forget that Pakistan is a, has a very large and growing nuclear arsenal. Uh, Pakistan has a very effective military. It faces continuing tensions with India. Plus, uh, a, a really, for Pakistan, um, a, a, an experiment gone wrong in Afghanistan where they thought they could put the Taliban in power and then control them. So all around Pakistan, things are not going well. And in, inside Pakistan, they're going worse. But over the years, the military has proven over and over again it will take the strongest possible measures to stay in power. Uh, it may have to. So, but this is the judiciary pursuing these charges. Is there not a firewall between the military and the judicial system? There's no firewalls in Pakistan. Uh, the military has ultimate control of everything. They have a facade, sometimes a very uh, complex facade of uh, civilian government, uh, uh, legal proceedings through the high court. But the fact that the, this arrest took place on the premises of the high court. And initially, uh, the highest judge there said that this was against the law. And then very shortly, the, the military had the uh, judicial system jump into line and they declared the arrest legal. Uh, again, no one should make any mistake about it. In the end, the military controls Pakistan, but the people always seem to want to have a say about it. And Imran Khan has a kind of popular appeal that really no other leader has had in Pakistan. Uh, even uh, Benazir Bhutto never had this kind of fierce uh, support that Imran Khan enjoys, uh, particularly from the people who feel they've been excluded from power in, in Pakistan over the decades. All right, David, excellent to talk to you. Thanks so much for sharing your insights. Thank you.